Hi everybody, this is Equipping Heaven Dwellers. It's the 26th of March. Welcome to everyone. We welcome all you beautiful spirits from the Father and we welcome all your angels. We honor everyone's um, uh, participation together with us. We're gonna start off with taking communion. Lord God, we are so, so grateful that we can um, that we can know Your presence. That we can come into Your presence. Uh, we remember that um, the Israelites camped around the presence, and the church has been camping around the sermon or the pastor, or maybe the pastor and the piano player. In my case, but we want to camp around Your presence. We want to enter into Your presence, and we know that You've made the way. Yeshua tore the veil, making the way, and you told us that your kingdom was at hand. And um, so we know that it's close, it's near. And we thank you that you're opening our eyes up to what that means. And uh, I recently heard Dr. O say that communion is a portal. It's a t it's, we can go on back on the timeline to that moment in time when Jesus, quote unquote, shed his blood. And um, he opened a portal into that timeline, time frame, and the communion communion and the cross are, are a portal into, the, into your kingdom. So we just go to that place and we believe that. We believe those words. We, under, we don't mind we understand them, but we believe it. And so we're going to enter into your kingdom through the portal and the, and the, um, the window, the door, that you have made. And we partake of your uh, substance, your DNA, your body, your DNA. We partake of your substance, Yahweh, because you instructed us to do this, and that as we gaze upon and partake of your body and blood, that we, uh, that um, they are duplicated in, in our earth being. We get to trade our, our earth self, our wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked condition, earth human condition, for your, for your garment of, for your garment of white light, and for your uh, gold refined in the fire, and for uh, eye salve to see in the spirit realm, to see and hear and sense and smell in the, in the spirit realm. So we partake of your river of life. In your river of light, and your substance, and we thank you that there's so much more that that means. That how we just give you thanks for how much you've opened up to us about how what 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 all that means, and how it uh, how it can affect us in our life. Amen. Amen. And welcome, Doreen and Niels. Thank you. Right. So we actually, last week, we, we said that we were going to um, continue on with what we shared about last week. So we're going to do a little recap. Um, but this is all about the new era. And so briefly to understand something, <clears throat> Or the new age, as some we, people might. Or the say. new age, yeah. We've moved out. It, we have gone through maybe some times where we've experienced a move of the spirit, uh, like we experienced the joy of the Lord, or the early 1900s, the healing flow began to happen. And so there've been what we would call moves of the spirit, the charismatic movement. They were given names, <laughs> but Holy Spirit was was moving and and bringing fresh revelation and experience to the church but what we're entering now is a new era and that's like what happened at the time of the end of the old testament and the time when jesus came on the scene those people that were living at that time entered into a new era it wasn't just a, a move it was a totally new 
era or a totally new age. And, you know, the scripture talks a lot about from age to age. And so we understand that we're not going to the end of the world, but we're going from age to age, like it's circular. So what we're, what we're in the process of entering is a new age, and that's why we recognize that there's a transition taking place. And when it comes to a new age, um, what actually, uh, the old age actually totally passes away. They, everything that they believed in the, in the old age of, of the old covenant um, passed away with the new age that came with Jesus. And so uh, everyone had to let go of their religious beliefs. And so that's one of the things that we found is that what we have to do is we have to let go um, of all that we've believed and just let go to, to God, to Jesus, to Father, to Holy Spirit. Just let it go and trust that we're stepping into this new age together because, as I said, it's a new age. It's not just another move of the Spirit. So we're not looking for revival or reformation. We're actually coming into a place where we are participating in the restoration of all things. So we, we just began to talk about it last time, and we have a few more things to throw out with respect to it. But I wanted to just, um, last time I wanted to share this little uh, picture with you, which I didn't have the chance to do, but now I'm going to. Um, let's see. Um, why is it not showing? No, that's not what I want. Sorry, just just give me one minute, and I'll be putting it up there for us. Okay. All right. So, back to you. There we go. There it is. Can everybody see that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yes. So, so yes. this is this is what is known as uh, people have called it. You know, the zodiac signs of the zodiac, and we don't sort of really have it as Christians. We've like no, nothing to do with that. But what we have to under what we have come to understand is that the stars are beautiful creations, and they are beings, and they have a purpose that Father and Yeshua and Holy Spirit gave them. That purpose is to foretell things. And it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows its handiwork. Day unto day, utter speech, night unto night, declares knowledge. So the stars have a blueprint purpose from Father. And it has to do with, um, with um, the, the, the ages that we are, um, or should I say, the stars also declare the ages that we are in. And so what I had shared about last time is if you can see where it says um, Aries, and if you go straight up past Aries, you go to Libra, you know, if you go diagonally, well, that was the time of the law of the old, of the old covenant. And if you go to the next one, Pisces, and you go across to that, you see Virgo. So Pisces was the age of Jesus, the age of the church, the age of the birth. If you go to Virgo, is the, is the woman that presents the birth of the, of, the, of the child. And so we have the symbol of the fish that's often used by Christians, but it, it's the age that we have been in. And these, um, if you go, as I said, diagonally, it, it tells the story of how they connect together. And and what I, why I'm saying age is because the sun actually moves a degree at um, over a period of time, uh, 2000, over 2,000 years, and that takes, the, that takes us into the new age as far as the, uh, the signs of the stars are concerned. So we are in this transition between Pisces and Aquarius, and Aquarius is a being that releases the living waters. But if you go across Aquarius, you get to Leo, which is the lion, which is dominion. And so you see we're coming into an age where we are going to be coming into fullness of maturity as sons and as 
sons to rule and reign and have dominion. So this is the age that we're moving into. And we've been, we, we, we're recognizing this now, which is helpful because we knew we weren't going for another revival, but we didn't quite understand that it was actually an age that we were moving into. And, but we kept recognizing, man, Holy Spirit's leading us to let go of all the stuff that we've believed because we're being challenged by things that we hadn't seen before. And so we're, we're, we're finding ourselves like, well, I really believe this, but now, now I'm being challenged. Is that really true? And so we're discovering that transition is taking place. That's what that actually is. We're moving into a new age. And it's not, these ages don't just affect a few people. These ages affect the whole cosmos. So what Jesus accomplished in this Pisces age was for the whole cosmos. But as we're coming into the next age, it's going to become manifest what Jesus accomplished. And in, in, a, in, in, the, in the cosmos, and we are going to be a part of it because we're going, to, we're, we're going to be ruling and reigning together with him to affect the restoration of all things, which is what Jesus purchased in the Pisces age, if you want to call it that, what Jesus purchased uh, through, the, through his death on the cross, the restoration of all things. So I just wanted to bring that uh, Frederick puts the scripture in Job 38, 31 to 32. Can you tie up the cords of Pleiades or loosen the belt of Orion? Can you lead out the constellations of the Zodiac in their season or guide the great bear and its cups? Yeah. So it's definitely written about in scripture and there's other scriptures that say that all the, all the stars are named. The fathers, the Godhead's named all the stars. And so we, we do recognize that what we are looking at today and what we're starting to look at more and more is what is this age about? What, what, is it, what are the differences that we already are participating in, but what are the differences that the Holy Spirit would stir in us and show us today? And we briefly looked at the idea and understanding that everything in all of creation is a being. Because even if it is a table that somebody made, it comes from a tree that has a record of remembrance in it because it, it grew in the earth and everything has a memory. So the tree was cut down by somebody, their energy and effort was put into it and other people's energy and effort until it was made into a table. So that table carries the record of the tree it carries the record of the energy of the person that put it together. And so it, and it has Brownian motion in it, even though it looks very stable to us, it has motion in it because everything in all creation has the sound and the light of the voice of God in it because he said, let there be. And when he spoke it, that frequency went into everything that we see around us. And whether we've used it as people to create something that seems to be a static piece of furniture, for example, or not, it still has, it still is, in a sense, alive. All right. Now we're in a fallen, a fallen world in that sense, but, but it's still alive. And our part is to help grasp a hold of how, first of all, ourselves and what this means to be in the new era for us and then second of all how we are to relate not only with each other and the father and jesus and holy spirit but with all of the cosmos right so this is the exciting journey that we're on and so sometimes we might have considered certain things as just inanimate objects and i shared last time that i thought the stars were just inanimate objects I had not really uh, considered them as, as living beings with a testimony from God. They have a record of, a, of, a, of a, a purpose. We call it a scroll, right? Um, because just to say this too, when you go into a new era, there's a whole new language that opens up. 
there's a whole new way of relating that opens up. And that's what happened when Jesus came. It was a whole new language. I mean, all of a sudden, John's baptizing people in the water, you know, for the repentance of their sins. And, and then a whole lot of new things are opening up. So the same is true for us. We're discovering a whole new language. So when we talk about a scroll, we're basically talking about a, a book or a, or a writing that's living. A living letters that says, this is what this is. And it gives Heavenly Father and Jesus and Holy Spirit's definition to a thing. So therefore the stars are living beings and they have a record of purpose. They travel among each other. They carry light. They carry frequency. As it says, the stars uh, are meant to um, declare the glory of God. And where people have used it for evil purposes, that, 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 that's something that we judge. But they have a God-given purpose, right? So, so having recognized, and you might recognize, that there are things you might have considered as inanimate objects. And recognizing that they actually have life in them, you may want to <laughs> repent to them. And you may want to, like I did, I went and I stood and I said, stars, I repent to you that I thought you were inanimate objects and I just want to honor you as beautiful creations of Father. And uh, I just opened up my heart up to embrace. Because you see, in this age where we would come to a place of governing and ruling together with Yeshua over the whole of the cosmos, the only way we can do it is through love. That's the only way. And so um, we're learning about the fact that we can actually engage with all of these creations, all of the creation. We can engage with trees, yes, and with flowers and with the waters and with everything because everything has life and we can speak to it, but we can also learn to engage thought to thought. So these are some of the things that are opening up for us. But as I said, it will only happen that we would have heavenly authority to relate with them through love. We, we get to embrace the whole cosmos. And remember what the scripture said. It said, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his only son. You know, the whole cosmos. So we as sons of God also are called to do the same, to love the whole cosmos and to learn how to relate with it. And that's what's bringing us today to something that we felt to just take a little focus on. Um, yeah, Kathy just posted this. I just said forever or ever and ever in Hebrew is olam, which means age. And we did talk about a new age and um, what a new age is or has looked like in the past history as recorded in the Bible in the past session, yes. And so, so today what we felt that we would just take a little focus on is love, but with respect to our being. Because guess what? The first place to receive and to be able to relate love in is with ourselves. Before we can go and relate and love everything else and everyone else, we need to receive that love for ourselves, for the being that we are. And this is the intended purpose, that Jesus loves us so much that he came and, and, and wants every single one of us to be one with him in his love and know that love intimately. So we were going to just talk about a few things. And Kathy was, <laughs> you know, let's just put it this way. Some of what we're discovering is that the scriptures that we've read, that we might have thought, what on earth does that mean? Or maybe we just ignored it because it didn't sound like love to us or it didn't make sense to us. These things are being shown to us for what they really are. And we're getting to know the truth. And 
So before we go into looking at, you know, just a bit more about loving ourselves, Kathy was going to share some scriptures that you might have really thought, what on earth does that mean? Yeah, I have to um, give credit where credit is due because um, definitely Ian Clayton opened this uh, subject up to me and I heard him teach on it years ago, but I heard him teach on it recently and it went a little deeper and it made, uh, made it make way more sense. So in, in uh, it, it actually is a way of understanding that, I mean, there's, there's a real fundamental difference in the way that Hebrews think Hebrew thinking works versus how our, um, well, I call it my Greek American mindset, but I'm, I'm assuming that you guys, it, it all comes kind of from um, our Western mindset, would, which would have a, have a base in, in England. So that would be our um, tie, but it's uh, form versus function, which, which is kind of like, for me, it, it's, it's confusing, but that, so what the latest teaching I heard him talk about, what made it made more, a lot more sense in Hebrew, um, whatever is in Hebrew, they think in terms of a function of something rather than the form of something. So in Greek thinking, if we think of a hand, well, it, a hand, you know, does certain things, you know, it's a hand, but in, uh, the function of a hand in Hebrew thinking is, um, is way bigger than that. It's, it's more about, it's about dealing with people, but it's also like when Jesus said, my kingdom is at hand, it means it like this. He, they see it like this and see how many doors there are and windows there are into the kingdom. Um, so there's all these entries into the kingdom, but the kingdom was like, it was like a house. It was like, like a covering, like a house. So it's, it's this close, but it's also like a house that we can enter into. And Jesus tore the veil so we can enter into it. And that, that made a lot of sense to me. But so um, there's, um, there's parables that we go, what? And so the parable, like the one where it says uh, about uh, plucking your eye out, if it has, a, if something about your eye has offended you. Well, in uh, our Greek thinking, we would go, you know, look our eye out well that's gonna hurt and and then we won't be able to see so but in Hebrew thinking it actually means that the eye is all about grace and if you have offended grace then you need to stop what you're doing that's kind of like repenting it's like okay I see that this is not a good choice it's not a good decision it's not a good way to live so I need to turn from this way of living and move in a different direction and the hand, I mean, I think there's something about cutting off the hand in one of the parables. The hand is about dealing with people, or it's about like this, entering into the kingdom. Of, it, it's about what, what, um, what's outworked from, from the motives of our heart or from the thoughts that we have. And uh, the foot in Hebrew means the function of the foot in Hebrew is to carry us someplace. So it carries us someplace that our eyes have been looking. And so if we're going to repent from that, we're going to change the direction that we're walking. So these passages are about dealing with what's going on in our life. Are we offending um, God, Yahweh's ways? We're stop. If we are offending Yahweh's ways, then we need to stop, stop that and deal with it. So um, is something you see, Though a way that you're walking or something that your hand is doing is an offense to Yahweh's kingdom, then that's what we need to turn away from. Uh, let's see. So, and yeah, another uh, way of the Hebrew thinking that is really huge for us is where where we're told that Jesus had no place to lay his head. And so we think of him as being, well, he's too poor and he doesn't have a place to live and he doesn't have a house and he doesn't have a bed. But that's not really what it meant at all in Hebrew thinking because um, it, he was compared to a bird having a nest or a fox having a hole. Well, the function of a bird's nest and a fox hole is to procreate and reproduce. So, um, and the head, of course, is about government. 
So what Jesus was really saying in that parable was that he had not birthed anyone into his image as yet or brought anyone into maturity, which is the function of the head. Function of the head is completion of government. Um, so he had not brought anyone into maturity where he could lay his government upon their shoulders. So anyway, that's, that's quite different from our English, um, English way of our Hebrew, Greek, American way of, of looking at, at those scriptures. I'm finished, Michelle. Yeah, thanks, Kath. Um, yeah, just to uh, see, I uh, see Frederick posted um, Romans um, about the creation uh, was subject to bondage and that uh, the whole of creation has been groaning for the revelation of the sons of God. And so it says, um, we ourselves also, who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we are looking to, to, to be sons and to have our whole bodies redeemed and set free. And so, um, <clears throat> but if we see that what we hope for, uh, it was in this hope that we were saved. But if we see what we hope for, it isn't hope. After all, who hopes for what he already sees? Um, for us to rule, okay, that's a statement. For us to rule as manifest sons, we must realize that creation is actually alive. Yes, that's, okay, Frederick, you've raised your hand. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Michelle. Um, thank you, Kathy, that was very insightful, especially the eye and the um, plucking out your eye. Um, I don't need to be disabled, but anyway. Um, right. to, to go back to, to your, your Zodiac or, or the Maseroth, Michelle, that you said is we, we're entering the age of Aquarius, which corresponds with Leo, which is dominion, and Aquarius, again, the water bearer. So it, it's flowing and rivers of living life, waters and all that stuff. But unless, I, I just realized that you were talking that unless I realize that all of creation lives, like it says, you know, everything. Um, the, and, and it's not the new age teaching that God is, is a tree, but God, you know, they all live, is that I cannot rule and reign and fix in inverted commas fix creation if it is an inanimate object like you said you know we cannot redeem um like you said the stars we cannot redeem them to their proper function of glorifying god and and not what what man has made them to be um if they're inanimate objects so that was just insightful to me that you know you can only rule over over a living thing you can't rule over a dead thing Amen. Absolutely. That's good. Absolutely. That's good. I, th when I was first starting this journey, before I ran into Ian Clayton, God was taking me through a whole bunch of these verses, and this was one of them. And what the word that really stuck out to me was that word about decay, um, that the world was in decay. And I'm like, I knew what decay looked like. That looks like lettuce in the, in the refrigerator too long. You know, it's like, oh, decay, you know, and, but it was really a, a picture to me that, that the world that's decaying would be set free as the sons are set free. Sons are already set free. The sons are already set free. And we need to share that freedom that the sons already have with the world because it's still decaying. And so that was such a visionary um, thought to me. I mean, I feel like I've been trying to come into understanding about how to do that as a son ever since then, because my body's still in the place of decaying, but I have this vision of it not needing to be a decay. So that means it's still connected too much to the earth realm, and it's not as connected to the spirit realm as it needs to be. So there's this journey of mind, my mind, of moving from, uh, moving from, being connected so connected to the earth that i'm still decaying into being so connected with the spirit realm that i'm not decaying and and there's this journey and i i guess that's how i see this whole process that we're in is this journey of coming into understanding how we embrace that how we embrace that whole thing and and there's a lot of parts to it i mean there's certainly a lot of teachings i've i've uh, 
accumulated and, and embraced a, about that very concept, but to make it manifest in the earth realm is, is the challenge that we're, I mean, Frederick and I've already said this, so it's like, yeah, that's the challenge. We want to see it start happening in the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So carry on Frederick. Sorry, Michelle. And, and as Kathy has said, you know, again, form and function, you know, do, are we just, you know, are we sons just so that we can walk around with it with a name tag and says, I'm a son? Um, or is it the function of restoring? You know, I mean, let's make man in our image to rule and reign. And, and also, like Kathy has said of the decay is, you know, Romans 8 that says that the creation is subjected to futility. So, you know, it, it with with a fall or whatever happened in whatever the terminology is for the for the Eden thing, um, you know I want to say is mankind was was the reason for the futility and mankind needs to restore and redeem all of creation and it's not just planet Earth it is all of creation um, it's a lot lot bigger than just the planet we live in. I know right. isn't that awesome? I mean what a vision and and uh, it's it's hard to grasp that we can co-create with them, co-air and co-create and, and to wrap our heads around like, oh my gosh, that's, that's a huge uh, mission uh, as a human being on the earth. Right. So um, one of the things that we felt to really zoom in on um, today in this whole process is just like to zoom back into who we are, right? And we recognize that we are spirit that comes from the Father at the time of conception. The Jeremiah chapter one, verse five says, before I knitted you together in your mother's womb, I knew you. And in David, in uh, Psalm 139, David says, it says, all my days were written before there was even one of them. This is just a recap about us, okay? So what that means is that we are spirit from the Father and we had an agreement with Father uh, about what we would come to this earth for and that's what's called our book or our scroll and it's written in heaven and that's what David meant when he said all, all my days were written before there was one of them. It, it, it means that this was the agreement that we as a spirit being would, to, would care of the Father would carry out in the earth. It's what we call our scroll, and, um, and it, it resides in our spirit. So if you can picture this, you have a chat with Daddy in heaven as a spirit, and you and Daddy agree upon this book. This is what we're going to come to do. Yes, I like this book. It gets zipped up into our spirit, and then at the moment of conception, our spirit comes in to our mother's womb. And at that moment in time, when the two egg and sperm come together, there is a flash of light that happens. You can see it even on YouTube because that's the presence of our spirit coming in to join and to, uh, uh, to form together with the, the, the body and the soul of us. So the body and soul begins to form. Um, and grows in the womb until we're born in the natural as a spirit with a soul and, and, a, and a body, right? So therefore, we are a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And our soul and body carries a record of our generations because it comes from the sperm and the egg of our parents. So it carries the record of the generational line. Whereas our spirit carries the record of heaven because we are spirit from Father. So that's where the, and when we believe Jesus, that our spirit is immediately awakened in union with, with Father and Jesus and, and Holy Spirit. So that, that, that's the three part being that we are spirit, soul, and body. So what we realize is that. And this is the key thing for t today that we're just sort of zooming in on a little bit more is that we, we are to love ourselves, spirit, soul, and body. And so what that means is that um, we are to recognize how to relate with each part of who we are. And we talked about 
the scriptures that says, you know, cut your eye out or cut your hand off. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the body for a minute. And we're going to recognize that our body, like we just got through saying, right, that everything in creation is alive, is a being. So we are a three-part being. So we have the being of our soul, the being of us as spirit, and the being of our body. So when it comes to the being of our body, which is what we're looking at right now, we're looking to see how we're going to relate to the being of our body. Okay, and so what that means is that um, we're going to recognize, have I loved my body? Do I love my body? Do I reject my body? And we, we, if, if, my, if I'm experiencing pain or I'm experiencing something, um, you know, that, that's a, a wound on my body, Am I, do I love my body or do I reject it because, oh, it's painful or it's, it's wounded or it, it doesn't look good or I don't like the, the hair or I don't like my eyes or how we relate to our body because it is a sentient being and it is absolutely magnificent. It is beautifully created being. It is it's, it, that's why, isn't it David who said, you know, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He was recognizing. And, and so the body part of us is, is beautifully made. And every part of all creation has a serving blueprint or a serving mandate. Creation wants to serve us. The stars want to serve us. And we want to serve them in government. And so our body wants to serve us. And you'll notice how the body will heal itself because it wants to serve us. It has an innate purpose, um, a beautiful purpose to function together. We could, without a body, we can't actually function in the earth. But we are ruling, called to rule here. And so we have to have a body. So it's a very vital part, a very vital being, sentient being part of us. And so therefore, as a spirit being, we need to learn how to relate with that body, not to put that body down, not to ignore that body, and to, to love our body. So that means to embrace my body. Um, and that means even if I've used scripture, and this was my personal testimony, even if I've used scripture to declare things over my body and say, you know, by the stripes of Jesus, you healed and, you know, not accepting anything less than God's blessings and you won't get off my finger or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> whatever it is that, that I might be taking authority uh, and, and just telling my body, you know, just I tell my body, you are um, you're healed. And uh, even if I've used scripture to speak over my body, it doesn't mean that I've loved my body. And I actually had to repent to my body because um, I was standing and declaring the truth over my body and, and, and commanding it to manifest a certain way. And the opposite was happening. And I thought, what's going on? Is my, is my body rebelling against me? And so I thought, well, I need, to just, I need to just talk to my body. So I talked to my body. You know, what's this about? And what I got was, you're trying to dominate over me. And I mean, I just realized it. Yeah, I've still carried a dominating attitude towards my body. And I think we were taught this in some respects in in the past that, you know, we were just to, you know, forget about your soul and, you know, you've got to die and, and, and only the spirit can live. But what we realize is that's not true at all. Each part is its own beautiful part that Father, Yeshua and Holy Spirit created. And our spirit had, as a spirit, we have a function, but so does the soul and so does the body, its own function. And we need to honor that. So then I was able to say, I see what you're saying and I agree with you and I repent and I just want to embrace you. And 
you know, I heard Ian Clayton say, we, we can, if, if, if our body is in pain or something, and we tend to reject it, we, we, we need to change that to love it and actually embrace it as a weaker part at that moment in time. Because as a spirit, we come from the Father, we one with the Father, and there's, there's that tremendous reality of that. But our body, as Kathy said, you know, it's been, it's been subjected to, to frailty and to death. And now we're realizing, wait a minute, Jesus has given us everlasting life. Jesus has given us the, the provision of a restored body that does not die. Jesus destroyed death and, 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 and he freed us to immortality. Uh, so we're recognizing something has to happen here. Divine health is mine and, and into my body, and so is immortality. And I'm looking for this transformation to begin happening in my body. So what I had to realize was that I needed a new relationship towards my body. I needed to start to really appreciate love and honor my body, even if it looked and appeared weaker and, 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 and not dominate over it, um, but to actually embrace it and to actually cherish it and to, um, uh, to, to realize the, the value of my body and the beautiful working power and ability uh, of the magnificence of what Father created when he created this body part of us. So this was a thing that we felt like we, we would want to just um, take a time and just look into and maybe get engage on it. And this, uh, anybody has a question or comment to make? Let's see. I do. Um, okay. I, I think the revelation that we received recently about our body, soul, and spirit being a bench of three over our being um, has been really um, valuable to me. I've been making an effort to see myself as a bench and to communicate that way. Um, I have, I have uh, some weight to lose, and I, so I've been using that as a way to communicate, going, okay, if the three of us, body, soul, and spirit get into agreement on this, we can, we can do this together. It's, it's a project that we can do together. And so I've looked at it that way and learning to, to communicate with my body, soul, and spirit um, that way as a, as, a, as a bench of three. But I also feel like um, it was really helpful. Michelle had a, had a revelation some while ago that just hit me like a ton of bricks. And it was, um, you know how we, we've, we pretty much everybody, maybe not everybody, but I do and I, most everybody know, at, in some ways we're ashamed of our body. We're, we're really uh, ashamed of it uh, in lots of ways. And she got this revelation that um, that root of that idea, that attitude toward our body of being ashamed, went all the way back to Adam and Eve. When, when they um, rebelled against Yahweh, and you know, when, when Adam was created, he was created in the image of God. And the image of God is light, right? God says he's light. Jesus is light. God says he's light. And he's also energy. And... Um, so, and in his spirit. So Adam was created in God's image as spirit and light. So he had this light being that was around him. And when they came into agreement with the enemy, they lost that light being. You know, we're told something died. Well, his body didn't die and his soul didn't die. So something died. So the connection, that connection, that, that's, that light being, he lost that. And then he looked down at himself and he's going, oh my God. You know, they were, they were ashamed of this what was left. And, and so God said he gave them skins. And we, this is another Hebrew un, a misunderstanding of the Hebrew that we've always understood that, okay, God um, killed the first animal and put skins on them so that they had clothes. But that's not really what it says. He said he gave them skins. So it, what he did was he gave us three layers of skins. He put, he, because they weren't, they weren't complete. I mean, they they look they they've lost their light being, and and that's one of the things that's being restored to us. That in that um, where we trade for for uh, 
God's character for the gold and God, God's character and nature in, in Revelation 3, 18, I think it is, or 19. Um, and the spirit of light or the spirit of white, it says a garment of white. But if you take all the, uh, all the spectrum of the rainbow together and put it together, it's white. So I think that what he's talking about there is white light. He's, we're, we're rest he's restoring our garment of white. In addition, when, we, when we're saved, we get a third strand in our DNA. And they, the scientists can't see it because it's a strand of light. And so we're getting that restored. And, and I, love to, I love to look at it that way. You know, I love to see, it, it helps me to, to see that, in, you know, in my imagination to see that. But, but it helps to understand that that's why we, we first began to be ashamed of our bodies. And we really don't need to be because now we have, have restored that, that garment of light. And so we can, um, we can see ourselves that way and understand that the shame was not really our own so much as it was um it's a part of the fall and we that's part of that that uh decay part that we can overcome or give up as we come into greater understanding of who we really are in in yeshua yeah amen uh, friedrich um yeah kathy thank you once again every time you sp speak spirit and soul right you just give me a, a I, I just get a revelation from it um exactly michelle as you said is of being uh, ashamed you know they were created adam and eve was created they were naked they were not ashamed and then afterwards in genesis 3 it says and their eyes were open and they realized they were naked and then they covered themselves so that's where the shame comes in but the beautiful thing is that um jesus in hebrews 12 you know, the, the, the perfecter and uh, author and perfecter of my uh, faith says, for the joy set before me, enjoy the cross, scorning or despising the shame. And it is so beautiful. You know, even Hebrews 5, that says a husband being the, talking about the spirit person loves his own body. And as you said, the church has taught us, you know, this is just, you know, it's going to be, become compost or whatever. But this very body that I get, this is the body that gets glorified. I don't get a different glorified body. This body is going with in a glorified format so yeah we need to love our bodies we need to despise the shame um we need to love our bodies it's a commandment in, in ephesians 5. yeah thank you frederick you know when kathy mentioned also about the uh, three layers of skin that father gave us in the garden um i saw that recently as the love covering of father yeshua and holy spirit that's why it was three so while we, we, were, we were ashamed of what we had done, the love covering of Father Yeshua and Holy Spirit was put, was put on us as three layers of skin. And our, our spirit, the spirit that we, that we are imploded to the inside of us, and now as we recognize we are brand new kindness creation, we're recognizing that our spirit is coming uh, to take its place on the outside, or should I say, surrounding us again as these light beings. And so our spirit has a very nurturing, loving, covering relationship towards the soul and the body um, as a spirit being. But maybe uh, we, any, anybody have any quest more questions or comments to make on this? Let's just take a little time to give you a moment to absorb. Please feel free to to comment or question. We'll just wait a minute. Michelle, I'm just so glad we're talking about all this. And, um, you know, that the Father is revealing these things to us. Um, there's much to learn, but I absolutely know in my spirit this is the right direction. So I'm just, uh, I'm excited about it. Mm. Thanks, Joel. Anyone else? Don't, well, feel, I, uh, don't, feel, uh, don't feel shy, remember, <laughs> because uh, no question is off um, the radar. You know, when it, and I think sometimes in, in all this change that's happening, we, we, we need to feel comfortable about asking questions because we probably don't realize someone else has that same question or maybe a bunch have the same question. Or comment. Oh, I have a comment. 
I can't. Okay. <laughs> I, I was thinking more about the this new age thing and an experience I had just this morning. Um, if we if we're gonna have a new age, what kind of things should we expect? Um, because if you think about when Jesus instituted the new age, um, he he came against the whole religious system. I mean, he instituted a whole new way of thinking and a whole new way of thinking. And they didn't get it really. Um, I, I think Paul was the one that got it the most. And that's because he got it in the spirit realm. He didn't get it flesh face to face. He got it in the spirit realm because he went down to that cave and spent time there and he got it directly from the spirit. So, um, what kind of things should we expect? I mean, if you think about everywhere Paul went, he was saying, you know, what you're looking for has come, but it didn't come like you're thinking about. It didn't come like you were expecting. It came a whole lot different way. And the ones that could embrace what Paul was saying were able to go on with it. And the ones that could not embrace that were clinging to the, to the history, to what they already knew are the ones that got left behind. So, um, so I think that it's important for us to kind of think about what kind of things might new age, this new age look like. And it's just what Jill was saying, that all of these questions we've had are being opened up. We're having a whole new way of looking at these, the record of the words that have been left to us in the Bible. And, but also I, you know, so I, I want to open that up to what ways do you think that might, that might we might want to expect to see what kinds of things in a new age. I mean, there was a new way of meeting together. There was a new way of, of entering, entering into or thinking about who God was when Jesus came. I'm talking about, um, I've heard, I've heard lots of, of uh, prophetic words about now this, this season that there's going to be a new sound. And that's what I was hearing this morning was the new sound. And so we have to be sure and like, not be close to things, you know, judge it, judge it for sure. But yeah, like, does your spirit resonate with it? Because the new sound I was hearing was, was crystal ball, um, bowls, they're bowls, they're, they're crystal bowls and they actually make them in Utah. But, um, and, and, you know, if, if you very first hear them, you'd go, Oh, well that's new age because like they've used them in Tibet or, or, you know, s some other religion. But, what I notice is that it makes a difference who's playing it because, because I can listen to the ones on, on YouTube that are coming from, from those Eastern religions and they really sound dead to me, but you have a Christian playing them and there's life in it. And, and it's like, this is a whole new sound and it just vibrates within us. There's a frequency to it. I mean, I think that's another thing is we're starting to recognize how there's frequency to everything. There's frequency to the rocks and the trees and the sun and the moon and all these things are frequencies that we can tune into because we're a frequency with the light within us is a frequency and it's a frequency that we can tune into and we can learn to listen to that language. So that's a new thing. So anyway, what I want to open that up to see what you think might, we might expect to come out of this new age. Well, the uh, restoration of all things. I mean, this is like the first baby step towards that to really understanding and, uh, you know, taking that journey. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's the way I'm looking at all this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we might not even understand what that might all mean, the restoration of all things, you know, and I... <laughs> I, I think in terms of our government, you know, our government's falling apart, but it needs to, because if it's time for the kingdom of God to come in, I truly wonder if most of us, I mean, I might have an idea about what the kingdom of God might look like, but, but I'm, a, you know, a little further down the road in opening up to new things. I mean, what about all the Christians that are stuck? You know, I, I really yeah. feel like there's a lot of Christianity that, wouldn't even like the kingdom of God because they really don't know what it, what it would be like. And, and, but what it, what, what is that going to be look like? And then there's, God isn't, isn't okay with, um, um, usury, which is what our fiat, uh, economy system is. God's not okay with that. That's not God's system. What is a whole new system, uh, economic system in the kingdom of God look like that? That's gotta be something new. I mean, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, something that just crossed my mind is um, it's, you know, you mentioned um, some of the, some of the our brothers and sisters are stuck um, in Christianity and I call it churchianity and I don't get me wrong. I love the church. I mean, I, without it, I, God knows where I would be. Um, but I think it's so important to model um, this journey and this walk. And, um, you know, I think as time goes on, uh, it will set an example and help others to learn and to not be afraid of it. And um, it, I think it's going to ta take a lot of us um, just speaking about it and doing it. And, you know, I'm just a big believer in modeling things for others because you don't necessarily even have to teach it, let's say, you know, they, they learn by watching. And uh, yeah, that's good, Jill. I, that's, you're right. Amen. People have to see that if it's safe for you or someone else, then it'll be safe for them. Um, I was sort of thinking in the new um, age to come that um, the things that we are just coming to know, right, because it's, it's, um, the majority of people are still into um, church and things like that. But I think in the new age, then the, it's going to be a new understanding and more and more people are going to come to the understanding of um, what the change is, how we change it from one age to the next, and maybe from the church age to the kingdom age. And saying so the kingdom age, um, I believe it will be more of a manifest manifestation um, of the works of God. I think in the kingdom age, more and more people will learn to hear his voice, more and more people will learn to actually um, see him, address him, go up into heavens more. And so this will be some of the positive things um, and they will carry the frequency of God. Um, I also feel that they will know the frequency of God and know that when they're in right standing with God in order to manifest the works of God or the things that they're instructed to do. But I also believe that the downside of that would be those who don't accept it, that would seek to come up against it, seek to criticize it, pull it down, and even destroy it. But I just think for the new age coming up, it will be a major shift in the way um, the people of God, the children of God, and the worldwide ecclesia does things. It will be different. Um, they will be hearing directly from God and moving in the different realms of God. Yeah. Well, and they've already, you know, we've already seen some things about um, how churches should be structured. You know, Mike Parsons is uh, modeling that at the moment. I mean, Ian got the revelation, but Mike Parsons is actually modeling it as far as a bench of three being, um, you know, being the, the structure. But and it's relational rather than um, top down or I, you know, I, I, I as pastor have all the answers and instead it's, it's a bench of three that has to relate to each other and, and hear from God as far as coming together for a plan of action for a group of a body of a group of people. So, you know, there, there's another big change that that's, um, that's already started, but it certainly hasn't taken off. That's the only, there's probably other, other people that are doing it, but Mike Parsons is the most visible example at the moment that I know of. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think just for time, maybe, well, did you have something to say, Hanitra? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, maybe. Uh, um, to me, um, what is to, to be ex expect is that, uh, expected is that um, uh, we are um, we are to really take in our place as co-creator with the Godhead and do as fathers do and manifest because that that is where Aquarius is uh, the water is going down through the realms and impacts the, the earth so it will take much more dominion uh, for us to take place and also um, maturity and uh, also you know, uh, re really, de really 
um, really to be in the oneness, not only oneness with the Godhead, but all creation. That that what do you, we are melted in. So it's it's it it gonna be oneness, oneness things uh, happening according to me anyway. So when I when when I when God when I shot when I was shown what's going on, uh, what happens uh, a few weeks ago. When I, then I knew that uh, there was a shift and a new era has come. It was just shown to me. It was literally shown to me, was shocking me in the sky with uh, exactly this uh, clock, God's clock and the Aquarius things and Angelic who, who is uh, released uh, uh, with that era, you know. And uh, I, 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 I saw it and I, I was with someone and I talked to the person, like, do you see what's happened? Look at the sky. Something happened, a new sign, a new change. And by the time, uh, by the time I talked to him and look at him and both, both of us going to look at the sky, the things disappear. And, uh, and then I knew that there is people who, who may not like, really like it because it may challenge their faith like, yeah, Jesus forever. Yes, Jesus forever, but we have to take our place also, you know, mm -hmm. um, as co-creator uh, with God and so and so. So it will also be a challenge anyway. That's why we, it requires maturity from us and really to grow and really move on from what we know and to be ready to grab what God is ready to give us step by step. So that's, I can share uh, a bit, so thank you. Amen. I know there's a lot more we could probably, um, we could probably look into and maybe we all, we can do that more next week, but just for time's sake, since we were focusing particularly on love and on loving ourself and on loving our body um, and any ways in which we've been treating our body that um, we maybe need to um, repent on. <laughs> uh, I th we thought that we could just take some time and just engage. And let's just go in and what we could do is we, we can go in just to the mobile court and we can ask for any accusation our body has against us. Because in the mobile court, in the court of heaven is a place where we, and we've, we've looked at this before in equi Equipping Heaven Dwellers, where we take a stand uh, to see the enemy judged. And so we can do that and just see whatever and however, uh, when I say whatever accusation, we just to understand what is, what, how does my body feel about me? As, as, as how am I treating my body and how does my body as a living being a beautiful living being that's a part, very vital part of me feel about how I've treated it so that we might repent if we need to and just get into a relationship to um, start to, to love our body. Because as we said, that's part of the manifesting of us as sons is when our, we're manifesting divine health, when we're manifesting the glory and the rivers of glory out of us and it's radiating abundant life, right? So how about we just, um, we just step in together? Is everybody, everybody's okay with that? I know Frederick wants to do that. So um, should we just go ahead and do that? Oh, I was gonna ask first to make sure that everybody's comfortable with the, um, or understands the, the mobile court. Is everybody okay with that? You know, know what that is and what happens there? I'm okay with it, yes. Okay. Because we have new people today, and, uh -huh. and we've been to the mobile court before, but we have new people, so I just was wondering. Um, so, Adrian, does your family not understand about the divine, the mobile court? Yeah, he said that he does. He does know about it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, All uh, right, just, just to make but, sure so that yeah. you're not too confused by the... By the whole, yeah. whole process. So. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Well, it's, uh, it's all right. we'll just go with Jesus. We'll go with Jesus to the mobile court. So we'll just. If we you have questions, you can ask them afterwards because that's that'd be just yeah. as good to ask your questions afterwards. Huh? And okay. and 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 let's just say each one of us we're just going to step in together. And so you know whatever you get, if you know whatever comes to you, just know that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to each one of us individually, right? So each one of us is going to get something may not be everything to do with our body or whatever, but just be open and the Holy Spirit will show you something or lead you to discern or know something, all right? Because we're going to step in together. So so I'm just going to put my camera on. sure and share what you get so that we all know because um, it helps everybody to understand what you're getting and then we can, get, if you get a picture, sometimes you might not understand the picture and then we can help you understand the picture or or whatever so be sure and don't feel don't be shy to share what you what you're seeing unless okay. it's too personal so all right so we just want to come together and by faith we step in together into heaven through jesus as the door we are able to come into heaven. So you see the door and you see it's open and you step into heaven. And when you step into heaven, you see Jesus is right there. And we just take and we just come together and just thank you, Jesus, for being right there with us. We just open the eyes of our heart to see and we come like little children to you, Jesus. And we are so thankful that all of heaven's been opened to us by you. And we just come to embrace you. And so let's just take a little time with Jesus. And if you sense or hear or feel anything, please feel free to unmute and share that. You may feel like that you're just going to sit there with Jesus. I, I sort of saw us sitting down there with Jesus and, and let him, um, because Jesus is the one who wants to show us heaven because he's provided heaven for us. He's brought us back into heaven. So it's, it's his domain to show us and tell about it all, right? So you may want to just see yourself sitting there with Jesus. And just relax and rest, and that there's no pressure to have to see, but just relax and just draw from your heart, out of your heart, to Jesus. We ask for audience at the Divine Court, at the Mobile Divine Court. We ask for audience. And we um, thank you, Righteous can, Judge, for hearing our case. Kathy, can we just hold a minute on that? Ready? Oh, okay, sorry. I was asking the Lord this time. Just give a little time for people to, you know, orientate and with Jesus.
You know, perhaps we can just do it this way and just say, Jesus, we want to thank you for the beautiful body that you gave us. And, and we just want to um, take a look at it with you and, and, and hear what you have to say to us about, about our body and, and about the beautiful body that you gave us. Does anybody have a, a something to share? Uh, yes, Michelle, if I can. Uh, as I re as I repent about uh, how would how do I feel about my body, how did I see my body, and so and so. So uh, Jesus told me a uh, lack of knowledge, and uh, he got it from the accusation. Uh, a lack of knowledge, and not only lack of knowledge, but totally ignorance that um, my body, our body is a representative of the, all the universe, all the cosmos, everything functioning in our body, the organs, the uh, blood circulation, the hormones, everything, the joint, everything, the circulation, the, make, the pump, uh, the heart pumping, everything like circulating in, in non-stop like in eternity. It's just representing the whole universe. So by not loving our body and uh, like harming our body or hating our body is affecting also the, the, uh, the, the, the entire cosmos because we represent it. And that's why we, we couldn't even um, participate in the redeeming of the, the all creation because we just have lack of knowledge and and ignorance about what is the purpose of our body uh, 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 in, in here. So I have been repenting and uh, that's what I got. That's uh, as we do that, we really uh, uh, get access, really legal ac access, really right to uh, redeem the, the whole creation, affect the entire cosmos. That's what I got. Wow, thank you so much, Anitra. Wow. Frederick? Um, as you said, just going into the court, I, I saw uh, myself sitting at a table, you know, like in the courtroom with, with the lawyer, um, going over notes type of, of scenario, you know, referring to the movies. And I was just aware that, that, that Jesus was just showing, you know, you're wonderfully and, and, and uh, awesomely made, you know, in, in song. And just becoming aware as, as if he's showing me how I should see my body. Um, you know, so just going through the notes, you know, before the court starts type of thing. Um, just to update now what it should have been. So, yeah. Thanks, Frederick. That just really bears witness with what Anitra said, doesn't it? Um, I guess Jesus is wanting to show us how magnificent our bodies is and how little we've understood them, right? <laughs> That's what I'm getting. Hmm. I mean, that's powerful, powerful, uh, what you got there, Hanitra. Um, 
you know, and, and we can repent for just listening to what others say about our bodies. You know, we've studied things because we've um, been to school and we've listened to what has been taught about our bodies, but we, but we haven't really come to the creator to find out, right? Ourselves personally. So, wow. You know, um, that, um, that stuff on a meter guide, um, it's really true because it just seems like uh, it just seems like we need knowledge um because we don't really know what to do um when the doctors tell you people and people believe the doctors because they're trained and it's supposed to be the truth but and it's not always, and God knows, and um, I just, oh, and what I was saying, like when we're diagnosed with something, some kind of disease, we don't really know about it until we do some research on it, and then I have to make the decisions, but it's with God, everything's with God. Uh, the doctors try, but they don't know. Mm. Thank you, Diane. Mm. Wow. Is everybody have, having a witness about this, that Jesus is actually showing us that we, we haven't come to him and that we don't know much? Adrian? Basically what I saw, I don't know if somebody can maybe interpret what I saw, but I saw a right foot and it has like a sandal on it. So I saw the right big toe, but it was almost like a boot coming up to above your ankle, but it was a sandal coming up to your ankle. That's basically what I saw in, in mm. that's it. Thank you. Anybody else see something? Just remember whatever you see that it, even if it's different at all, it all will um, come together. We've, it always comes together no matter how differently um, we see. Well, um, what I saw was what looked like a small little dog chewing on my arm. And um, when I approached the mobile court, I asked uh, the father, you know, what's this about? And he was speaking to me about accusation of the view the way we view our bodies as uh, as disposable or mm. something which is just used for a time or for a period mm -hmm. uh, just for a purpose um like if you have a, a eternity mindset and you look at our period on the earth the view is obviously just for the small little period in eternity we just use this for i don't know somebody might say a test or whatever purpose we are for you but um what i was seeing was that that wrong mindset of of actually feeding or using or abusing the body for our purposes um yeah mm. wow thank you manas adrian do you have something else No. Okay, I just saw your hand still raised, I thought. Okay. 
If anyone gets an interpretation of um, Adrian's right big foot, be sure and uh, speak up because he wants it. If I can just add something, um, the impression that I got of the foot, it was like a military type boot, but it was a sandal. So it's not a normal army boot like now. It might be something in the past that I would have used in the Roman times or something like that. So it's like a sandal, but it's a boot mm. for military. Mm. There's two salt sets that come to mind, but this is probably just me trying to, to analyze it. Um, you know, Jesus talked to other, the armor of God is, is the shoes for preparedness, which is a military setting. And then um, the foot, the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Gimel, which is represented by a foot, actually a camel's foot, but still a foot. So, um, and, and Gimel is the full provision of God. So I'm not sure if any of those two relate. Mm. I was thinking about the right foot um, because we're on the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that adds to the picture or not, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was also thinking the same thing, Kathy. Anyone else? Ah. I also, um, when I think of your big toe, um, the big toe brings balance or helps you with your balance. If mm. you don't, your yeah. So um, when I think of the big toe, is about balance. So it can be about balance in your life or something like that. Lulu, like you too soft. Can you talk a little louder? Can you I'm get sorry. closer to your microphone so we can hear you? Yeah, sure. Is it better? Yeah, yes. that's better. Um, gladiators' shoes are quite open, and I think the design's about like an open toe effect and closed up, still like a boot. I don't know. Uh, I, I think that's very much the picture I've also so also got is is that military gladiator type shoe, yes. Hmm. Yeah, that, exa that is exactly what I saw is is that type of boot. So gladiator war Roman shoe that's um, is basically till above the ankle to the calf, but it's open in the front. So I specifically saw the big toe. Wow. So what I was getting as you said that, wow. <laughs> as you're speaking, Adrian, I just saw that it, what, what I saw was that we were being shown just how powerful our body actually is. It is actually a very powerful being. Wow. Wow. And if you think about it, I mean, just like we, we, we know that our brain, for example, right, you know, people say, and people say, but we'd have to ask Jesus about it. What do you say, Jesus, that we're only using a certain amount of our brain, but the capacity of our brain is so huge. 
So this is what I was getting when you said that. I just, that expression of that foot and the, and the, and the, and the shoe that was, was on it, it just to me was an expression of the Father, uh, Jesus saying to us, showing us that our body is extremely powerful, like an extremely powerful being. And perhaps we, and we haven't seen it that way. Well, I'm also thinking that it has to do with uh, being a warrior and that we are warriors, or you, maybe you are a warrior. Um, and um, I don't know, warriors in the kingdom. I don't know. I'm, I'm just seeing that about warriors or intercession or something like that. I think that all makes sense because a couple of years ago, it's many, many years ago, God actually said that I'm a warrior. So mm. that might be because of, of that. Mm. Yeah, I wondered about that, if that was um, a word for you as being a warrior or if you had been doing lots of intercession and being a warrior. But, I, th you know, I, I think the more we come to understand our position, we're all warriors in our region in our nation our house our region our nation um there's a lot of uh, battles that need to be fought and won in the courts of heaven and so that the whole warrior thing is really important and and again also i think it, it fits in with what anitra said is you mm -hmm. know we, we if, if we don't recognize ourselves the way god sees us we might not see ourselves as a warrior we might just see ourselves as the errand boy that you know that has to carry firewood but if once we recognize and see ourselves as god sees us um and honor god's vision for us if i can put it that way then we you know then only then can we start doing it but as long as i don't see myself as he sees me then um, i'm still ineffective mm -hmm. So could we take a time now just with what we have received from Jesus and, and, and we, can, we can engage this in the court. We could actually do it right away um, in the sense just right, right with Jesus, but, but we could actually just engage this in the court. So I'm going to suggest that we, what we do is we all just go into what is the court? And I'm going to describe it as in Hebrews 12, verse 22 to 24. The Bible says, You have come to Mount Zion, which is the government of God, to all the angels, to the cloud of witnesses, that are those who have left their body and are in heaven, to those that are the, um, the men in white linen, and to Jesus who is the mediator of a new covenant for us, the one that's made a way for us, to the blood that speaks for us, and to all those whose names are registered in heaven across the nations of the earth, that's all of us, as well as to the Father, who is the judge of all. And so this is what we're coming into this court together this is what it looks like. So it's, we step into this court. It's the mobile court that we've come to here. And we'll come and whatever you can agree with on, I'll take the lead here to facilitate this, but whatever you can agree with on, just put your voice to it. Even if you don't unmute, just put your voice to it. In other words, say it out loud. Yes, I agree. Because what we're going to do is we're going to come with what Jesus has shown us and as a group, we will, we will make a repentance and then you can continue to do it personally over anything specific, of course, that you might be shown personally. But this is what we've been shown as a group. So, um, and then if anyone needs to add to what I've said in repentance, then, then um, that please can feel free to do so. But w when we come to the mobile court, it is to have the enemy judged. It is, it, he, he can't say anything or do anything. We just, he, if there's any accusation against us, it comes to us. But the enemy has no part to speak here. He just gets judged because we are repenting for something. In other words, we're saying we come out of agreement with something and we're coming into agreement with something else. And where 
we were in agreement with something that we failed to come out of agreement with, we recognized that we had given room to something other than God. And that would be the enemy. In any way, he's had opportunity against our body or against us because of our ignorance towards our body. So what we'll do is we just stand together in the court. So see yourself standing together in this court. And please know that it's very different. There's a lot of joy in this court. And there's an the atmosphere of love. And there are angels there that are assigned to us and to our families. And there are members of the cloud of witnesses that are in, have an invested interest in our purposes and in the earth as well. And so we coming specifically, Jesus, because you have shown us some things um, to this court today. And we are coming because we have seen that we want to repent concerning our bodies. So, Father, we, we want to stand and say we repent because we have not loved our bodies, because we have not seen our bodies as a true sentient being, a created being. And we have not understood that we were supposed to have an honorable relationship towards our bodies as a spirit being. We repent for where we have disregarded our bodies. We repent for where we have demeaned our bodies. We repent for where we have rejected our bodies. We repent for where we have dominated over our bodies. We repent for where we have misunderstood the magnificent of our bodies. And we repent for where we have listened to other people telling us what our bodies are made of and what our bodies are about instead of coming to you. And so therefore we recognize that we have been ignorant. And as Jesus showed us how tremendously, awesomely, wonderfully powerful our body actually is, we want to say to our bodies that we, as we're repenting to Father, we also repent to you, body. And just turn to your own body, as it were, and just um, agree that you repent to your body. So I repent to you, body, because I have not respected you and honored you as a living being. And that I did not recognize that you were just as equally as valuable as I as a spirit being. And that you have an amazing creation that is made by Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, and we have not really known you, and are repent for where we have dominated over you, where we have ignored you, where we have abused you, where we have not recognized we were to have actually a relationship with you, where we have not loved you. We repent for where we have actually acted in shame and been ashamed of you, where we have spoken shameful words about you, and where we have compared you to other people's bodies, and we have compared you favorably or unfavorably, and we repent because we have not really known just how absolutely intricate you are, and how, as we were shown, you, you actually are um, an expression of the cosmos in various ways. And we did not recognize just actually how tremendously powerful you are as a being. But today we want to em 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 repent to you and, we and embrace you and just really ask you to forgive us and, 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 and receive our, our repentance. Father, we also ask that our bodies would forgive us, spirit and soul, for all of the neglect and abuse and everything that we've mentioned before. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we repent for where we have, as I said, where we have just listened to what other people said um, and, and abused our bodies because we listened to what other people said instead of coming to you, Father, to discover. And we do recognize that we have been ignorant of the truth about our bodies. But today we want to open up not only to love and embrace our bodies, but today we want to open up to you, Father, the sure and Holy Spirit, and we want to say we, we want to learn from you and we open up our hearts to understand and, and to have knowledge and to, to truly have you show us how beautiful and wonderful and powerful our bodies actually are. And we want to thank you for this beautiful body that we each have. And we want to em em embrace you as, as really vital and start having a right relationship with you, our body. We turn to our bodies and we say we want to have a right relationship with you, body. And just anything that you feel to say personally to the Lord or to your body, just, just feel to say that. And if you want to um, just comment out loud, just do that too. And look to see and sense anything in the court that you might, might pick picking up. When we were repenting, um, I saw on my on my body in the spirit there was a like a golden ring going around my body on my physical body, um, like, like a centimeter thick or something, it was a gold, I want to call it like a plate or a armor or whatever you want to call it, but it's, it was like a covering over, over my physical body. Mm. And when you said now, look into the courtroom, I saw a flame in the middle of the courtroom and I, and I sensed the consuming fire of God, it's purifying us and the gold connects with that for me. That God has purified our bodies and yeah. Mm. I wanna share quickly, uh, as you as you, as we repented, so I saw verdict. I saw the judgment for uh, of the enemy and uh, and also verdict uh, uh, for for us to to inherit and to possess. For the enemy part, it was uh, a paper saying he, he has no more legal right to, to perish us because the lack of knowledge and ignorance has been uh, forgiven now, so he has no right anymore. And someone told about decay and, and in turning into more immortality. The paper we got at the other hand is a passport to it, it immortality, mm. no decay. Thank you, Hanitra. Awesome. Jason, you wanted to share something? Uh, like my dad said, um, when he saw the gold go around his body, I saw something similar. I was looking into a mirror and saw a kind of glow of my body like in my face and around me almost mm -hmm. a yellowish gold glow mm -hmm. thank you you know what you saw adrian and jason could be the what what anitra just said is that that the testimony of immortality an expression of immortality of what our bodies look like in immortality you know because i think it's been wonderful that we've been seeing our spirit and, and seeing how our spirit, how we look as a spirit being, but now we're seeing how our body looks and um, the beauty of the immortality of our body. So I believe we're going to see more about what that looks like. And I think that's what you said you saw, Jason, what you saw, Adrian, is an expression of that. Anybody else seeing something like that? If you look at your body, now in heaven.
as you were talking now, I, I, I realized that this is something that my body has missed. And when we've done the repentance, it's like it was restored back to what it was supposed to be. You, you talked about in the beginning of the session of the body we had in the, the Garden of Eden through Adam. And this is like that light that came back as a, as a shield or a covering so mm -hmm. that was a restoration of what we are supposed to be. So it was mm -hmm. immediately as we repented, that happened. And it was like we returned back to our, no our normal state, if I can call it like that. Mm. Mm. I also felt um, the, the joy of Jesus. And basically, he was saying, you've, you've entered a whole new world now as you began to realize that you did not know or you lacked the knowledge of your body. Now it's opening up a whole new world for you. It's, so as we've opened up to say, I want to know the truth or when I have the knowledge of my, of my truth of the body and its glorified uh, purpose and, and how it, its function and its power, it's like a whole new world's being opened up to us. So we, we, we know that we, ex we receive that um, uh, result or that verdict um, of uh, manifesting, you know, nothing to can hold us back from immortality now and from actually coming into the, the true understanding and, and relationship towards our body. Um, but we, we've used the word immortality, but I think what we're going to get now is what is immortality and it's going to be opened up to us what this immortal body is actually like as we continue to embrace our bodies and love our bodies and, um, and honor them and, and the Holy Spirit will open up revelation of, of, of the magnificence of this body and especially in its coming into its immortal state. Um, sorry, Michelle. I, I was just looking at uh, what Jason saw, and uh, I was just seeing myself standing in front of this this mirror, like in a fitting room, and I was just, you know, turning and and looking behind and whatever. And uh, even as G, as as the Father declared with creation, and says, and it, and I saw that it was good. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I think we're coming into understanding of our new creation being. Mm, yes. I mean, we're supposed to be a new creation when we're saved. And I think we've been that way since we were, yeah. quote unquote, saved. But we didn't understand it or see it that way. But, yeah. um, but our new creation being is, yeah, new, mm. isn't it? Mm. Spirit, soul, and body. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, let's just thank the Lord um, in this court today. Say, so, Father, thank you for um, the verdict for us. And thank you that this is now written, what we've agreed on, what we've repented of is written in record in heaven for us. And that we accept and receive the, the verdict that we are free to experience immortality and to also know the glory of, our, of the body and what that means. And we receive and thank you. Jesus for meeting us and showing us these things that we could come into the court of heaven and and take action on and and receive our freedom. Um, so we just receive that verdict and we can take it into our heart, take it into the garden of your heart and just plant it there. You just can plant it however you, you like to see it be planted, but just Take it into the garden of your heart now. And we just call that to be sealed in the garden of our heart, Lord. And it's now going to be watered by fresh revelation and grow in us. And, and we just receive that, the blessing of this time together as we thank you, Father. And we, we step out of the court. And um, I'm going to switch the recording off now.